Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at displacement time graphs from exercise 9a. So a displacement, what is the word displacement? Usually we'd use the word distance, but displacement means the change in the uh, position relative to its starting point. So if it's gone forward and then come back, its displacement is only the difference between where it started and where it finished. And it could be negative as well. If you're going in the, the opposite direction to the way that positive is set, then you could have negative displacement as well. So in mechanics, we usually use the variable s in displacement, and we use t for time. So a displacement time graph that looks like this, so that's a flat line, um, the displacement is not changing as time goes on. So the object here is stationary. If the graph looks like this, then the displacement will be increasing as time goes. Uh, so the, that means the object is moving at a constant velocity. And in this graph here, we have a slightly curved graph. So to start with, the change in displacement is not very much. But by the end, we're changing displacement pretty quickly. So our position is changing very quickly as time goes on. So in this graph here, we can see that the object is accelerating. It started off with a very low speed, and it continued on with a very high speed. OK, and if we were to work out um, the gradient of this uh, displacement graph, we'd be working out the velocity. Effectively, velocity, or speed, is how much our position changes as time goes on. It's the change in speed divided by the change in time. So let's go through a few questions here. A cyclist rides in a straight line for 20 minutes. She waits half an hour and then returns in a straight line to her starting point in 15 minutes, a bit faster than she did before. Uh, to the right-hand graph, we can see a displacement time graph. So it looks a little bit like this. 20 minutes um, to travel five kilometers, stationary for half an hour, and then she goes back to where she started from in 15 minutes. So 15, uh, so five kilometers there, traveled in 15 minutes. Uh, the first part of this question here is work out the average velocity for each stage of her journey. Okay, let's take the first part here. The velocity here is the gradient. So it's change in y divided by change in x. So in this case here, it's going to be distance divided by time. And because we're in minutes here, we want our velocity in kilometers per hour. 20 minutes is effectively a third of an hour. So it's going to be 5, the distance, divided by a third, a third of an hour, which is 20 minutes. So we're going to get 15 kilometers an hour here. Okay, so you can think of this as a formula of velocity equals distance divided by time. And I'm sure you've seen that before at GCSE. The next part here from A to B, there's no movement, so that's zero kilometers per second. Now when we write uh, kilometers per second, you may be used to it as kilometers per second like this. Effectively think of it as kilometers per hour as a fraction like that. And remember, if you've got a fraction on the bottom, you can effectively write this as h to the minus one, and that's how we write it in mechanics. For the next part, um, she has um, travelled in the opposite direction, so that's a negative displacement. So the displacement here is minus 5 kilometres, travelled in one quarter of an hour, 15 minutes. Make sure you've got the units spot on there. So she's travelled at minus 20 kilometres per hour. That's her velocity. Now, if you imagine real life, that's just travelling at 20 kilometres per hour. But as she's travelling back to where she started from, in effectively the negative displacement um, direction, then it's minus 20 kilometres per hour. The next part here is write down the average velocity for the whole journey. Well, here the average velocity is the displacement from the starting point divided by the total time. But here, because this person has traveled away from the starting point and back to the starting point, that displacement here has been zero. So the average velocity here in this case is zero because no displacement has happened. The difference between the finish, finishing position and the starting position is zero. Work out the average speed for the whole journey. Well, now you're talking about a different kettle of fish here. Um, in total, 
the average distance that was travelled, or the distance that was travelled, is 10 kilometres. 5 going there, 5 coming back. And the total time taken here was 65 minutes, so 1 and 5 sixtieths. You could effectively um, divide by 65 and then times by 60. So in this case here, we're going to get 9.23. So the average speed of this journey is 9.23. So notice the difference in notation here, or difference in terminology. Average speed just takes positive values. So if you've traveled 5 there and 5 back, that's a total of 10 in terms of distance. But average velocity works with displacement, which is the difference between where you started and where you finished. And if that hasn't moved, then your displacement is zero. All right, then. So your turn to have a go at this question here, then. Pause the video and have a go. <clears throat> right, OK. So uh, this car shows, um, this graph shows a car traveling along a straight road. Um, the journey is divided into five stages, A to E. Work out the average velocity for each stage of the journey. OK, so E here um, is going to be displacement of 40 divided by half because it only went for half an hour. So that's 40 divided by one half, which is 80. And this is going to be in kilometers per hour. Uh, let's just, I would always, um, 80 kilometers per hour here. It is a car, so yeah, that's very feasible that that car traveled at 80 kilometers per hour. If it was something like a horse trotting along the road and I got 80 kilometers an hour, I'd be a little bit suspicious that my answer didn't go quite to plan there. In this part B here, it's 20 divided by another half an hour, so that's 40 kilometers per hour. Now I'm writing that as kilometers per hour like that. If you want to use h to the minus one, that's fine as well. C here, that's zero. So I'll write zero kilometers per hour like that because you can use both ways of notating your answer. D here, this is going to be a difference of 40 on the displacement and that's going to have happened over one whole hour. So that's 40 uh, kilometers per hour. Notice here how the gradient of B and the gradient of D are virtually the same. They both go across one and up one of the squares, and that makes sense because their velocity is the same. For E here, remember we're working with negative displacement here because we're working with velocity. So it's going to be a displacement of minus 100 over how many hours? 12.30 to 1.30, so that's divided by 1.5 hours. So in this case here, it's going to be 100 divided by 1.5, which is minus 66.7 kilometers per hour. OK, part B here, state the average velocity for the whole journey. That's zero, because for the whole journey, we've started and finished at exactly the same point. So the velocity here, the average velocity is zero. Part C is a different question though, work out the average speed for the whole journey. Well, that's a different kettle of fish. We've travelled here 200 kilometres in total for the distance. And we're dividing this by four, four hours? Yeah, four hours. So in this case here, it's going to be 50 kilometres per hour, because it's kilometres on the top, hours on the bottom, so 50 kilometres an hour. Right then, have lots of practice on exercise 9a. Hopefully none of it should be too difficult for you, just a little bit of learning some new notation here. When it says average velocity, you're using displacement. When it says average speed, you're using distance. All right then, um, persevere through the difficult ones, ask your teacher for help, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for watching.